Thanks to the developer for this beautiful slice of roguelike brawling action. From now on, we're going to be giving away a free game every single month to the subscriber who is really active in the comments and just generally seems to put in a lot of effort. So if that's you, pop a comment down below, like, and maybe subscribe. The Nintendo Switch seems to have a game for everyone. Fancy murdering yourself in your sleep? There's a game for that. Want to be a superpowered kick-ass witch? Sorted. Or how about a ghost who can resurrect dead Vikings to possess and then play with four of your mates across a procedurally generated world? The Switch has got your back. Die for Valhalla is actually a hugely interesting hybrid hack and slash brawler slash RPG roguelike game. But is this one going to please the gods or trip on its own explosive crate and die? Let's find out. You're a Valkyrie from the Old Norse Valkyra, chooser of the slain. You embark on a quest that will lead you through strange lands where Norse mythology collides with Lovecraftian mythos. Sounds weird? Well, it actually is pretty weird. And that's straight from the developer's mouth. The game sees you choose a Valkyrie from one of four seasons. I think this is really just to allow four characters to choose from but they're essentially identical in every way that matters. Unless you're super fussy about colors, shotgun blue, the witch must then resurrect the dead to fight and die for her. Why must she do this? Well, um, uh, because, uh, look, I'm not gonna lie. I was as lost as you are, and I'm pretty sure the developer never intended to rewrite Shakespeare here. This is more hamster than Hamlet. Story gets 13 out of 20. With a randomly generated overworld and a loose story giving you rough direction, but essentially saying just go out and cut stuff up, the gameplay sees you traveling across the stage from left to right, shooting, stabbing, and slicing a path through a variety of enemies. The combat is pretty simple with one main attack button and a special attack that can be chained in a variety of ways to produce different combos. You can hold down your default attack button for a charged attack, and pressing your power attack while jumping will slam you down in a graceful smash. Above your health bar is a stamina meter required for the more powerful attacks, and this is essential for chaining together those special combos. You can quickly dodge with the press of a button, a very welcome addition after playing some of the more traditional brawlers recently. That one change means no more unfair deaths. If you die here, it's because you have the reactions of an elderly sloth, which is to say it's your fault. You have a fury meter which builds up in the background, allowing you to deal more damage and go into a bit of a rampage. You can also unleash your special charge attack by pressing the R trigger, which damages everything on the screen. This is really useful in a pinch to destroy all the barrels on the screen and collect up some health hearts they hold before you die. The game does hold your hand a little bit too much earlier on, and I found myself thinking, is this it? Thankfully, it picks up both in difficulty and variety of enemies. It's just a little too overtly drip feeding the difficulty at times. There are a wide variety of enemy types with appropriately comical names. These reference pop culture, which was great until I took an arrow to the knee. If you're scratching your head there, some of these references may be lost on you. For everyone else, you're gonna have a blast. You can possess several different Viking types, from the dual-wielding berserker to the bow-toting archer. My personal favorite was the good old sword and shield style. Which allowed you to turtle your enemy and stab for cover. Also blocking with the left trigger sometimes parries an enemy, knocking them on their backside. Now these first choices are all based on the Iron Clan. Throughout the game you unlock up to 10 other clans to choose dead warriors from. That's some serious content right there. Strange additions involve the ability to possess the bushes, barrels or anything else on the screen for about 3 seconds of pointless hilarity. At the end of each round, you can nerd it up with a few optional extra stats, if you're so inclined. When you get that final poke and send an enemy on a one-way trip to dead, 
they spawn a little piece of blue glowing goodness which is essentially XP. Collect this and at the end of the level you can spend that on upgrading your character. Firstly through standard increase X stat by Y amount, then a more interesting rune system that lets you choose a path through the runes to try and get the best upgrades in as few moves as possible, maxing at around 5 or 7. It felt like a little game in and of itself and I liked the idea a lot. Difficulty spikes quite quickly about an hour into the game which was quite frankly welcome. Combine this with the constant and persistent levelling system and you have a recipe for a game that rewards players for their efforts. Co-op play is always welcome and works very well here. With lots going on it can get a little crowded but that is to be expected with this style of game in co-op. Gameplay is very fun indeed and gets 18 out of 20. Quite a few games have gone with this artistic style on Switch, Wolverblade being an excellent recent example. I like this aesthetic and think it distances itself from the almost saturated 2D field enough to be appealing. The levels can be very dull earlier on. As mentioned, the assets tend to be drip fed to the experience, even down to things like the explosive barrels and different scenery. Things improve immensely when you hit a dungeon or a more unique area, but backgrounds just look a little drab and lifeless. I do like the character models themselves, however, and the game runs at a buttery 60 frames per second, which for a game based on timing and reflexes adds a great amount to the feel and gameplay overall. Graphics are so-so. The Unity engine can definitely do more visually, but the most important thing here is performance, and that is as silky smooth as Morgan Freeman's voice in The Shawshank Redemption. Yes, sir. I'm a regular Sears and Roebuck. Graphics receive 14 out of 20. The game is priced at £10.99 or $9.99. So once again the Brits get screwed over on price. This is getting a little tedious now. In pounds the American price is £7.50. Come on now developers, that doesn't make any sense. With my hissy fit over, the game is still cracking value. You're getting a unique world each time you play, a huge number of clans to unlock, each with their own unit classes, seven Viking classes with different playstyles and combos to master, over 80 skills in total. There's a deathmatch mode where you can battle your friends, not quite to the Super Smash Brothers levels, but it's a nice to have this on there anyway. All of this would provide countless hours of play as is, tack on the fact that it's got a four player local co-op and a survival mode where you battle waves of enemies and you have some serious meat to eat or corn if that's your thing value gets 19 out of 20 Music is very good, reflecting the Viking nature of the game with louder horns and drums underpinning the action with a more melodic and upbeat melody over the top. Each stage carries this energetic music and the enemy grunts and cries are all on point. I really enjoy the music and sound in this one. Characters have a quirky high pitched set of sounds when you attack or narrowly escape an enemy. The weapons all sound solid and the sound of an enemy axe striking your shield and sending them crashing into a heap is excellent. The only disappointment here for me was the distinct lack of any real HD rumble, which for me at least is now quite noticeable. Overall though, sound and music are handled very well and receive 17 out of 20. I have to admit after the first 10 minutes of play, I didn't expect this one to do very well at all. However, I am delighted to be proved very wrong indeed, and overall, Die for Valhalla gets a switch up score of 81%. There's an incredible amount of content on offer here and I think you guys are going to enjoy it immensely. If you're new to the channel, maybe consider subscribing. Thanks to all the people that have subscribed and are watching this content right now. And as always, keep it switch up. Cheers guys, see you later.